Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And first of all, let me just say thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and speak today and talk about the plan that we have for rolling out the COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine here in Ontario. Uh, you know, repetition, I think, is a great part of communications. And I learned from that uh, great Newfoundland Premier, Joey Smallwood, whose uh, school of public speaking would say, if it's worth saying once, it's worth saying five, six, or seven times. So I'm going to do that this morning and continuously so that we communicate as best that we can. What I wanted to do today was just talk about our mission, our operation overall, our concept of operations to execute that mission, and the various phases in it, and walk through some of the detail in those phases so that we know as much as possible right across Ontario about what is going to happen with the vaccine for COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, our mission was really clear, given to me by the Premier on behalf of the Government of Ontario, and that was to run an efficient and equitable COVID-19 vaccination program for the people of Ontario in order that they, those eligible to take a vaccine, would be able to make their decision based on knowledge of the vaccine and decide to take that vaccine in order to protect themselves from COVID-19 and the virus itself. And you know, we realized early on that our mission was a marathon, not just a sprint. And we had to be ready for the longer term as well as get started quickly and we want it to be efficient and we want it to be fair. And we're going to do all of those things. Our phase one really coincided with the first arrival of vaccines and really the vaccination of the two primary groups that we started with the prioritization given to us by the government of Ontario to vaccinate, first of all, those in most vulnerable circumstances. And then secondly, our healthcare workers. And at times, of course, both of those priorities would mesh because as we were trying to, to protect uh, those in most vulnerable circumstances, those in long-term care homes, for example, where they have had tragedy visited upon them by the COVID-19 virus, or in hot zones or lockdown zones, of course, we wanted to vaccinate the healthcare workers, the essential workers, the staff who work in those homes, because they are the vectors by which the virus would go into that home. We also wanted to uh, vaccinate those essential visitors that help look after the residents of those long-term care homes and the retirement homes in the most vulnerable circumstances. So obviously, those in most vulnerable circumstances and our health care workers, those two priorities often meshed. When we started out, we knew that we wanted to prove what we were going to do and make sure that it worked, because this is not just any vaccine. It is not just a flu vaccine or a shingles vaccine. It's different from all of the above, and we wanted to get it right. We knew that we would be restricted somewhat in how we could handle Pfizer because of its characteristics and because of the fact that we had to keep it frozen to 75 below zero, and because of the fact that we could not move it from the point of reception in Ontario itself. And obviously we had to shape our plan for that. So as we went after the most vulnerable people to ensure that they had an opportunity to have a vaccine, and then the healthcare workers to ensure that they were protected as they looked after all of us, we used the Pfizer vaccine in vaccination sites at the, at the places where we received them. And that is to say, as of today, after starting with two hospitals, the University Hospital Network here in Toronto, and of course the Ottawa Hospital in, in Ottawa itself, after starting with two, we've now expanded to 19 hospitals running vaccination sites today, primarily across southern Ontario, but of course in Ottawa also. And as of this morning, we had more than 14,000 people vaccinated, both uh, people that were working in long-term care homes, a few of the residents in those retirement homes or long-term care homes, and then some considerable number of health care workers who are most at risk itself. We're using those 19 sites. We're going to add two more hospital vaccination sites to that in the coming weeks here, and then we'll add two provincial health units to that total of 21. So we will have 23 different sites that will help in vaccinating people with the Pfizer vaccine. Again, because of its characteristics, we cannot yet move it from the point of reception. So we've established those vaccination sites on, on the spot where we received the vaccine. And we're gonna do thousands and thousands and thousands of people throughout the next month, two months and three months into the end of March at those sites with the Pfizer vaccine. Part of, of course though, of being able to protect those in most vulnerable circumstances was being able to get into the homes themselves and use them as special vaccination sites. And we know that in many of those long-term care homes and retirement homes, the staff who work there, the medical staff, are used to giving vaccines, used to giving needles, used to looking after the people that they love so much and have looked after so, so well. And for that, we would use the Moderna vaccine. As of this moment, we do not have the Moderna vaccine in our hands in Ontario, but we expect it in the next 24 hours. And we'll take delivery at four sites around the province 
in southern Ontario, in those hot zones, in the gray zones, in the lockdown zones where COVID-19 is, is ravaging the population, and we will take it into those long-term care homes and into the retirement homes to look after those people who are resident there and somewhat held captive uh, to the COVID-19 virus. As we did when we started with Pfizer, we will run a short and a small pilot program to make sure we get it right. That's why we use two hospitals to start with here, one here in Toronto, one in Ottawa with the Pfizer vaccine to walk through how we were going to do these vaccination clinics, to walk through how we got people to register to get a vaccination, to ensure that, that when they came through their, their file was up to date, to ensure that they were eligible to receive the vaccine, to record the fact that they had the vaccine, to give them some proof of that, and then also, of course, to book their second appointment for day 21 or so with the Pfizer vaccine, because the Pfizer vaccine, of course, requires two shots. We're going to do exactly the same with the Moderna. With the Pfizer pilot, what we did was roll out a playbook based on those two hospitals experiences. We conducted a hot wash, as we would call it in the military, where we brought on the hospitals that were going to be the next vaccination sites. We walked through that playbook. We walked through with the CEOs of both hospitals and some of their staff, the lessons that they had learned, what had gone right and how they could reinforce them, what had gone wrong and how they could fix it. And we walked it through. So when those hospitals became vaccination sites, as they have this week, they could start up knowing that they wouldn't have to make all the same mistakes that had been made in, in, the, in the first two iterations. And so we had a smoother operation. With Moderna, we want to do exactly the same thing. We want to go into one or two or three long-term care homes. We want to do it very carefully. We want to vaccinate the residents there using the staff in the homes where it's possible, augmenting them where it's necessary, and, and, and preparing a playbook from that, and then make sure that we learn put it in the playbook and then share that playbook with every, every provincial health unit and every long-term care home and every reti retirement home in Ontario. We want to learn, we want to make sure that the operation will be smooth. We're going to receive the Moderna vaccine at four different sites, for example, one hospital. Then we'll move it forward to the long-term care homes as soon as we're ready, uh, using the traditional uh, contracted uh, the transport. Uh, to take it to those homes. We'll make sure it's received there, the number of doses that are approximately needed for the residents in that home, make sure it's vac the vaccinations are administered, make sure it's recorded, and ensure that it is done right and give all the support to the staff there that is necessary. And then, as I said, we will pass on those lessons to all of the other long-term care and retirement homes who are going to receive these, these vaccines. While we're doing that, we're just not ignoring any other part of the population. And I would speak to the First Nations here and just say, be assured that those people in the long-term care homes or retirement homes that are First Nations are going to be looked after as part of this priority also, and that the health care workers across Ontario who work with First Nations are going to be vaccinated as part of that priority also. And at the same time, we've started in parallel a, a project with a small task force to go into northern Ontario and to look after initially those isolated communities primarily along the James Bay to start with, who are at risk themselves, and to vaccinate the people there. We've been in contact with the chiefs in the regions. We've been in contact with the health, health people who are on the ground, and we're prepared, pre preparing now to do that, and that's what we want to do very early in January. In fact, there are some long-term care homes in three communities along the James Bay that we can get into. Only small numbers of, of residents in those homes, perhaps 10 per home, but we think we can get to them early, have the medical people on the ground vaccinate those residents and therefore give them a level of protection that they do not have right now. We want to do that in, in, in the phase one in the north, if you will. Do, a, I think it's 31 communities that you can fly into only and then look at how we roll across the northern part of Ontario with a continuation of that program and ensure that we get to as many people as possible in those communities that have survived largely because they've isolated themselves from the outside world. And we know that their medical support is not huge on the ground, so if they get COVID-19 in their communities, it would truly be a tragedy, and we want to help prevent that. That's our phase one. We're going to roll out growing each week, growing each month. Right now, we have 95,000 doses of Pfizer that have been sent to Ontario. We've administered now over 14,000, as I said. We expect tomorrow to receive about 50,000 Moderna vaccines, and we will use those in the long-term care homes and in the retirement homes, as I said, for those in most vulnerable circumstances. And then in January, we'll receive in the first week of January another 50,000 Pfizer doses. And each week after that, a larger amount throughout January, 80,000 doses, 80 and 80 in each week. And for Moderna, on the second week of January, 
we'll receive another 50,000 doses. And of those, we will want to save many of them for that northern operation that I just mentioned. In phase one, in January, we will have about 300,000 doses of vaccine to administer to the people of Ontario for those who are eligible and want to have that vaccine to have it, to give them a greater level of protection than what they now have in those first two priorities, those in long-term care homes, those in retirement homes, those in most vulnerable circumstances, and the healthcare workers themselves. In February, we'll grow that to about 700,000 vaccines, and we'll get at more of the people in those two priorities. In March, we'll go to about 1.1 million vaccines. And so by the end of phase one, we hope to have vaccinated over a million healthcare workers and people in the most vulnerable circumstances here in Ontario. We can't do it any faster. We don't have the vaccines coming to us any faster. And if we did, we would use them more quickly. So we'll do it as fast as we can. And I know it's late to ask for a Christmas gift, but if I could ask for one, I would ask Health Canada to relook the Moderna vaccine and see if we could make that a one-shot vaccine and give us that greater, greater capacity to go out and vaccinate people even faster than we plan on doing it now. We want to flow seamlessly towards the end of March when we've got more than a million people vaccinated across the province into health care workers and those in most vulnerable circumstances. We want to flow seamlessly into what we call phase two. And that's when we get a large number of vaccines that will flow to the province of Ontario. We're looking at 15 million vaccines flowing into Ontario during the months of April, May, and June. And while we do not know exactly when they'll come, we're, we're assuming that we'll get them at 5 million uh, doses of vaccine per month for April, May, and June. And therefore, as a result of that, we want to be ready to put needles into the arms of about 150,000 people across Ontario per day. For that, we want to use mass vaccination sites, and we'll want to get several of those up and running to ensure that they are ready to go in late, late February, early March, to ensure that they are ready to go. We will we'll want to continue to use the hospitals, although we may not depend quite as heavily on, on them because they are fully occupied, we know, in the war against COVID on the other front. And we know that the stresses and strains on, on them are great, but also we want them in the fight nonetheless. Uh, and they do want to be part of this positive uh, part in, in the fight against COVID-19. And we want to use a vast number of vaccination sites, and dare I say it, pharmacies uh, across Ontario. And we want to use special mobile vaccination sites that can go into areas or go into folks that are at high risk into the area where they are and actually vaccinate on site. And the prioritization has not been done for phase two or phase three yet, and we will offer some counsel uh, to the Premier and to the Cabinet and therefore to the Government of Ontario so they can tell us what they want to do first. But I actually think with the number of vaccines that we have coming in, we will very quickly be able to get a, a number of priorities and we'll be able to get into looking after many of the essential workers across Ontario, whether that's farm workers or police officers or school teachers or, or, or other folks, we will be able to start, I believe, starting to vaccinate them early in that phase two. We will be able to get at uh, people at various age groups, particularly those who are most vulnerable, that we did not pick up in the long-term care homes or the retirement homes. That is to say, people that are 75 and upwards, people that are 50 to 75, and we will be able to start with those age brackets, and I think maybe the pharmacies would be a good way of executing that part of our program. We'll be able to start with those age brackets, and at the same time, we will be able to really pay attention to those in most vulnerable circumstances. Some of our First Nations in urban settings, for example, uh, other communities that are close unto themselves and don't normally seek uh, medical assistance and live sometimes, uh, frankly, off the grid. We will want to be able to go into some of those neighborhoods and some of those communities and vaccinate where they are and offer them this opportunity to be protected from COVID-19. We want to roll through April, May, and June and use every single one of those 15 million vaccinations. And if you do the calculation, you'll realize that's about seven and a half million people, thereabouts. More if Moderna should be a one-shot vaccine. If you add that to the over one million people that we will be able to vaccinate in phase one, we're gonna be at 8.5 million people in Ontario vaccinated by the end of June or early July. That's the bulk of Ontarians who we believe are both eligible to take the vaccine and who will want to take take the vaccine. We have, been, we have been encouraged, in fact, by the numbers that we see of people in Ontario making their decisions to take the vaccine. And you know, earlier, people were crying that the sky was falling. Not as many people would want it as we would want to have it. 
and that number was below 70%. Right now, we believe that we are at 80% plus of people who will want the vaccine, and most of them who will want it as soon as they can possibly get it. And that really is encouraging because people understand just how important the vaccine is in combating this enemy of COVID-19. We want to end phase two with the bulk of the population having had the opportunity to get the vaccine by the end of July. And whether we go in those priorities that I mentioned of essential workers or age bracket or those in most vulnerable circumstances as I described, or some different prioritization which we will recommend very soon to the Government of Ontario, we want to be finished those 7.5 million people receiving a vaccine, both doses of it, by the end of, by the end of July and finish phase two. And then phase three for us is steady state. It is putting the COVID-19 vaccine into the same category as a shingles vaccine, as a flu vaccine. And you can go to your family physician, your family clinic, uh, or the pharmacy closest to you, and you would be able to get your vaccine. Or if you had to have a renewal, as we learned down the road that things might change, you might need a booster shot of some kind. Those are the things we don't yet know. Then that's how you would get those booster shots. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our mission is to deliver an efficient and fair pro, uh, COVID-19 vaccination rollout for the people of Ontario in order that each eligible, eligible man and woman, person who is eligible, can make the decision themselves after an intelligent discussion and analysis of what the vaccine is going to do and how it can help them. They can make that decision to take the vaccine. We're going to roll it out in three phases. Phase one is through to roughly the end of March. We figure we'll have one, one to 1.1 1, 1. 1 million people vaccinated by the end of that healthcare workers and those in most vulnerable circumstances and a part of the North. Phase two will be huge numbers of vaccines rolling into Ontario starting on or about 1 April, 15 million vaccines in three months or, or a little bit. And that will allow us to have 7.5 million people in the province of Ontario vaccinated. And by the end of that phase, we expect that 8.5 million people in the province will be vaccinated and we can roll into more of a steady state for phase three sometime in the late summer. Those, that's the concept of operations for our mission. Uh, we're pushing ahead, ahead to execute it. Uh, you know, we heard, we heard loudly uh, from people this uh, past 36 to 48 hours. They want us rolling all the time, and we are. As of this morning, uh, we have 19 hospitals that are acting as vaccination sites. We will head to that in this coming week. We will be working straight through. We will not take any more days off until we win this war against COVID-19. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll stop talking right there and I'll be prepared to take any questions that you could ask. Thank you. We'll go to the phone line for questions. As a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question, please. From Camille Caramelli at Global News. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Hi, General. Thanks so much for taking my question. Um, so, you know, you, you said that there isn't uh, enough at this time to go around to everybody, but, uh, what, you know, a lot of emergency responders are wondering why uh, they aren't priority and when they can expect to be vaccinated. Peel Paramedic Union tweeted out recently that there's been no evidence that paramedics are included in the list of frontline healthcare workers who will get priority access. Why is this? Uh, first of all, we've gotten our direction from the Government of Ontario. We have two very clear priorities for us. As I mentioned, I'll, I'll say it again, those in vulnerable circumstances, and obviously we're talking about a lot of those being in those long-term care homes and retirement residents, and then our health care workers. And because of the numbers, even with three months of work with the vaccines that we have, we will not get all of those health care workers or all those in vulnerable circumstances vaccinated or offer them the opportunity to have a vaccination. So they will have to get picked up in the latter part of phase one, March, into the front part of phase two, which is April and May. And that's most likely when they will be seen and have an opportunity to get a vaccination. So we can't vaccinate people any faster than we can if we don't have the vaccines to do it. We know what we have for this phase one, and we know therefore we can do about one to 1.1 million people, depending somewhat on the take up there. And we can't do it any faster if we don't have the vaccine. So I'd challenge Health Canada, hey, deliver vaccines for us as fast as you possibly can, and, and have a look at that Moderna virus uh, vaccine and see if you could make it into a one-shot vaccine. That would allow us to get literally to hundreds of thousands of people, perhaps even several million faster. Follow up? Uh, 
Thank you so much. And can you clarify, you're asking Health Canada to make it a one-shot vaccine. Uh, I'm going to try to sandwich two questions in here, but uh, what power do they have in, in sort of changing that? Because uh, it seems like, uh, for the most part, it, it, it did come from abroad. It is a little bit out of their hands, from what I understand. Uh, and second of all, you know, the, the timelines, when, uh, when it comes to the uh, vaccination rollout, um, has been hit or miss uh, this past month. What sort of uh, guarantees can you give the people of Ontario or, or assurances that said uh, we will stay with the timeline? Well, uh, first of all, I'm not asking Health Canada to change the Moderna from a two-shot vaccine to a one-shot vaccine. What I'm asking is Health Canada have a look at doing that and saying maybe with the high efficiency that, that protects you in the first needle, it would be best for the entire population if we went just with a one-shot uh, vaccination program with Moderna. Uh, I asked them to have a look at that. I don't know what the answer might be, and it might come back that they're not going to look at it. It might come back that they've looked and it doesn't work, or they might come back and say, we've looked and it does work, and we'll go with them one shot. And that would allow us to vaccinate with a high level of protection, a very high level of protection, many more people much more quickly. We're ready to roll. And, and one of the things I've been pushing on the team is to say, I want to be ready here. Yeah, we're rolling through the playbooks now. We just did it you know, last week for the hospital, UHN and Ottawa Hospital. We're going to roll through a play, playbook now in the next several days with long-term care homes and get that part right. We're going to be ready for bigger doses. But I keep pushing at the team and saying, I want to be ready with our team right across this province if we should get the bonus of hundreds of thousands or perhaps even several million uh, doses of vaccine earlier than we thought or from maybe a third vaccine that gets approved by Health Canada. I'd like to be ready for that. We're expanding every single day. You know, like I say, 19 hospitals acting as vaccination sites today. We'll go up to 21 and then two uh, provincial health units on top of that for a total of 23. We can expand that capacity by using all those volunteers that were on TV over the, over the last 48 hours saying they want to do this and, and God bless them, we want them to do that. We can expand their capacity by bringing back and asking for retirees, medical, uh, professional healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, uh, paramedics, uh, anybody who can vaccinate people and, and, and be authorized to do so, to come back in and augment so we can run more hours and more people through those clinics and meet any demand put on us. And what we're aiming for now is to be ready for that big demand that starts at the beginning of phase two, the first of April thereabouts. But I also want to be ready in case a larger number show up or in case something happens like Moderna being authorized as a one-shot vaccine. Next question. And thanks, From Camille. Lucas Meyer, News Talk 1010. Hi, General. Um, if you can clarify something with regards to the pause. Um, the ministry said that <laughs> hospital sites administering vaccines requested to operate on a slightly amended schedule, recognizing the challenges that the holidays can have on staffing levels in hospitals and long-term care homes. But then you said yesterday that the issue was not trying to find volunteers at hospitals. So can you just, just clear up this discrepancy? Why was this decision made exactly to pause? And if it wasn't an issue with the hospitals, excuse me, <clears throat> who did this ultimately come down to? Scott, I'd be delighted to comment upon that and say, look, in hindsight, it was a wrong decision. Uh, I think I acknowledge that quite clearly and accept the responsibility that we'll get better faster now because we've learned from that. And we've heard the voices of the people of Ontario saying, get on with this, and that's what we are going to do. Uh, what I agreed to was that out in the long-term care homes and out in the retirement homes, you've got staffs who have been running flat out for 10 months, uh, looking after the patients that they love so much that they've looked after so well to the best of their ability. And they've been looking after them for 10 months now almost. And over the Christmas period, they, there was some sort of downsizing in the number of people who would be on duty in those homes and therefore available to come in for vaccines. And of course, as you understand, we can't just take everybody from a home, bring them to a vaccination center and leave the residents of that home on a tenant. So it's always difficult to get the right percentage away for vaccinations. When the, when the homes are staffed by less people for a couple of days there, it's, it's even more difficult, sometimes impossible. So we made the decision that over those two days, we would not run the clinics and then we would just go faster as quickly as possible and catch up, which is exactly what we're doing today. Follow up. Okay, but but I just think we need some clarity. Did how many hospitals specifically said that staffing was an issue? If you could just say that, how many said that? And two, is the province going to post daily vaccination numbers? How many were uh, were vaccinated per day? 
I, I'm sorry, I, you've got a lot of static here, so I didn't get the question. How many hospitals was the first question, said that they had staffing shortages? I don't know. I went by the information from the long-term care homes and some of the retirement homes saying they were reducing staffing somewhat to give people a bit of a break, and therefore the proposal was made to me, and I, I agreed to it, that we would not run over those two days, and that's why I did it. The second part of your question, I'm not, I didn't quite get it. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, General. Just, is the province going to be posting daily vaccination numbers? So how many were, po how many were vaccinated today as they do with you know, new case numbers? Are we going to see that this day we did this many, this day we did this many? Well, let me commit the province to doing that. Yes. Next question. From Brian Lilly at the Toronto Sun. Morning, Brian. Uh, General, you're, um, you're challenging Health Canada to get your vaccines quicker, but you know, regardless of the pause, we're still not going very quickly in Ontario. I, I understand that you will be ramping up, uh, but I, I do wonder if we're at the position that if we receive more vaccines in Ontario, that more could be administered. At the current rate, it would be 40 years before we're, uh, we're able to vaccinate the whole province. So um, beyond the fact that that this is new, it, it is two weeks in. Are you getting things done fast enough outside of the pause? Well, Brian, thanks for the question. No, we're not. Not right now. No, we are not. But we are expanding every single day. We're learning lessons every single day. We're adding capacity both in more sites and then more people to run those sites and to, to have more throughput. And so we are getting ourselves ready and that's been part of our plan. We call it step one Bravo. Step one Charlie was the 6,000 doses we got earlier in December to run into two hospitals. Step one Bravo in this phase one of ours is the, the, the number of doses we have right now so we can expand that footprint of vaccination centers out to the total of 21 hospitals and two PHUs uh, to be able to use the Pfizer vaccine and then the Moderna on top of it. So right now, no, we couldn't, not today, but we're growing every single day and that's part of our plan is to be ready and, and to be ready in January and to be ready if we get an extra dose or an extra bonus of doses that we don't expect right now. So yes, Brian, we will be ready. Follow up. The uh, Moderna vaccines arrived on December 24th. It's the 29th now, uh, and you said that the, the province doesn't have them. So why is there a delay in the federal government shipping them to you, and how quickly could you administer them? If, if they arrive tomorrow, could you be administering them on the 31st or the 1st, or is it going to be delayed until uh, January 4th? Well, first of all, we don't want to rush to failure in doing it, but at the same time, we want to start vaccinating very, very quickly. We anticipate that Moderna will arrive tomorrow. And within 48 to 72 hours, we will be vaccinating people in several long-term care homes, potentially a retirement home. And again, we'll be composing a playbook as we do that and learning the lessons and then spreading those lessons throughout the rest of the long-term care homes and retirement homes that are in this most vulnerable of circumstances inside of the lockdown zones. And then we'll be ready to go further and faster with more capacity, having learned some lessons. But you, I think you understand is that given the populations that we will deal with in those long-term care homes and in some of the retirement residences, those in particularly vulnerable circumstances, for example, with dementia patients and that kind of thing, uh, we want to make sure we get it right and not at the expense of speed, but we simply want to make sure we get it right. So look, within, uh, within 48 to 72 hours, we will be vaccinating people in at least one long-term care home, if not more. Next question. From May Warren at Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you for taking my question. Um, I wanted to ask, why uh, isn't Public Health Ontario involved so far in the vaccine rollout? And are there any plans to involve them going forward, given their, their skill set and their expertise in vaccination? Uh, first of all, they, they have not been involved in vaccinating so far because the initial doses of Pfizer, based on the capacity to store at minus 75, went to the hospitals throughout primarily southern Ontario, but not just. Obviously, I mentioned Ottawa now several times but two of the provincial health units are included in that, and they will start operations next week with a vaccination program using Pfizer. But make no mistake, and we're working with them now on a daily basis, we have asked for their plans to come back in from all 34 provincial health units to walk through how they would administer the vaccine to the people, given the priorities, to the people in their region of responsibility. I had the opportunity weeks ago now, it seems like, to talk to the mayors and wardens of Ontario, and one of the things they asked me at the end of that talk was, 
what could we do? And one of the things I said to him was, number one, wrap yourselves around the provincial health unit in your area of responsibilities. Take away the logistics burdens of, hand, uh, of organizing and running, for example, mass vaccination sites. Take that logistic organizational burden away from them and let them deal with the business that only the healthcare professionals can. That is to say, putting the, the vaccination into people's arms as rapidly as we possibly can and, and as safely as we possibly can, obviously. And that's what those mayors and wardens committed to do. And I know, for example, I talked with Matt Pegg, who's the chief of the COVID-19 vaccination task force in Toronto. He and, and, and the city of Toronto are wrapping themselves around the PHUs to make sure that they can offer whatever support they possibly can to make this role efficiently. So all 34 PHUs will be engaged and involved in the vaccination program. We're getting plans back from each of them as to our back brief from each of them as to how they plan to do this and then where can we support them, where we, can we help them, where can we make it even more efficient. They're all going to be engaged. Follow up. And could you just clarify, you were speaking about the phases um, and having 7.5 million people um, given doses by the end of July. So would that include like people just from the general population or would those only be people who are in like other prioritization like um, over 75 or other essential workers? Okay, so I'll try to be really clear. Uh, phase one, which goes to roughly the end of March, we expect that we can vaccinate just over a million people in, in the first two priorities of, of those in most vulnerable circumstances. And I mentioned to you that the First Nations are included in parts of that and then the healthcare workers, and again, I mentioned to you that the First Nations are inclusive to that, and then the North part, that's just over one million people. April, May, June, early July, which is our phase two, coincides with the arrival of 15 million vaccines. That's enough to vaccinate 7.5 million people, and we want to get it done over those three months and a little bit probably into July, and we want to get 7.5 million done by later summer. You had that to the 1 million that we'll do before the 1st of March. We're at 8.5 million Ontario men and women and, and people who are eligible to receive the vaccine in Ontario who will have received it by later July. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm just asked, wondering, like, someone who doesn't fall, fall into any risk group, like, when would they start to be getting it? Would that be Let me, around, okay, around thank that you. time? Or would let me just follow up on that, and, and thank you, and I neglected to answer that part of it, so I will. Uh, number one is we've got our first two priorities squared away. Uh, those in most vulnerable circumstances, healthcare workers. We know we won't get all of them done in phase one, so as we roll out through phase two, and then onwards to phase three or the steady state, we'll still be uh, doing some of those in most vulnerable circumstances and some of the healthcare workers, and that'll be an ongoing project forever, uh, of course. For phase two, with 15 million uh, doses of vaccine coming over three months, we can get at a lot of people and offer them the opportunity to be vaccinated. And we think that, you know, for example, we can do a lot of the essential workers, those farm workers, those police officers, those paramedics that were mentioned earlier, the firefighters, and, and people in the essential worker class. We also think that we'll get at a lot of people who are still in vulnerable circumstances. And whether that's specific demographics in our population or whether it's First Nations in urban, in, in urban settings that are having challenges, we believe with special vaccination sites, community vaccination sites, or indeed mobile vaccination sites, we can go to them and start offering them uh, the, the opportunity to get a vaccination. But in the middle of that, we also believe that we'll have capacity and the capability to be able to look at the age groups. And starting you know, in, in middle, later April, with people 75 years old and above, Obviously, we will have picked up a lot of those people in the retirement homes, in the long-term care homes, but not all of them. So 75 and above, and as soon as we have made significant progress in that age group, we would drop it to 60, 65 to 75 and keep going downwards. And I think we can get to a lot of mainstream Ontario by, by later July. I've not laid out priorities here. What I've said is I think we have capacity to go at several, several pieces of this puzzle all at one time and, and we'll shape those recommendations and we'll come to the government of Ontario with recommendations on what we see as the best way to do it based on an ethical framework that we want to use to guide and shape our decisions or our recommendations in this case and, and have those crisp decisions for the government of Ontario. But I think we can get at a lot and certainly in phase two, we will get at a lot of the people in Ontario who don't have underlying conditions, who are not the most vulnerable, 
who are not most at risk, we'll be able to get at a lot of them because by the end of that, we expect to have vaccinated 8.5 million people. Next question, and this will be our final questioner. From James Keller at the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi there. When it comes to staffing, both having staff available to deliver the vaccine and also making sure you don't have a lot of you know, long-term care or healthcare staff off at the same time due to side effects, what is the province doing to plan to uh, address those pressures? Well, first of all, uh, the pressure of having enough staff to vaccinate will grow as we, as we proceed through February and March. And then obviously, as I mentioned now several times into April, May and June, with those millions of doses of vac uh, vaccination arriving. And so, yeah, it is a challenge, but there are a variety of ways to meet it. One of the ways that you saw it over this last 24, 36 hours about the number of our professional health care workers, God bless them, who are ready to step up, do a long shift at the hospital, you know, fighting COVID-19 and the tragedy it's brought to families or, or, or doing other things to look after us. And when they finish that shift, they will volunteer to go out and take a shift vaccinating people. We know that that's a possibility. We want to look across the province at those who can put needles in arms, whether they are paramedics or whether they are uh, other folks. We want to encourage people who have retired or have just retired, who have left the healthcare profession for, for a reason, but who could come back and re be reauthorized to vaccinate people to come back in. And, and then lastly, as we establish both mass vaccination sites special vaccination sites out in communities where we want to go. We want to look to the pharmacy chains across Ontario and look at the capacity they can bring to actually vaccinate people directly, similar to what we did with the flu vaccine, but on a much larger scale. And, and we'd be looking at hundreds of thousands in, in a week or a month to go through those pharmacies and be able to meet that burden. And then perhaps the age groups that I talked about earlier might be best suited to go to those pharmacies and other groupings go to the mass vaccination sites or have our community vaccination sites set up for them. So we're working diligently to make sure we build the capacity as we go. We're gonna include all of those people, all of the folks that can put a needle into an arm and do it safely and do it efficiently, and who want to do it because they know that this is the bright light in the fight against COVID-19. And we're gonna be successful because we're gonna build it over January, February, and March. And we're gonna be ready when April comes and brings those millions of doses of vaccines to Ontario. Follow up. Yeah, and so back to this issue of the one dose vaccine for Moderna. I mean, what evidence have you seen that would make this a realistic possibility? And do you know of any jurisdiction in the world that has decided to go this route? Uh, first of all, I don't know of any jurisdiction in the world that has decided to go this route. I actually don't think there is one because Moderna, I'm not sure if it's been approved anywhere yet. It probably has, but it's certainly not approved in Canada yet. Or sorry, it, it's approved in Canada, but I'm not sure of any jurisdiction that has gone this route. Uh, what I say is, is I don't have evidence. What I have is a discussion amongst medical uh, colleagues uh, who, who come together and then talk to us and advise us and say, you know, the one shot of Moderna vaccine offers an incredible amount of protection. And why wouldn't we at least consider making it a one shot vaccine, getting that vaccination into, getting that vaccine into people's arms, therefore much more quickly and offering that heightened level of protection in a way that we simply won't be able to do by making it a two shot vac uh, vaccination program. So I haven't seen evidence that says one shot can work. What I'd like is some, somebody to look at it, look at it, come back and tell us, no, it's not possible or come back and say, yes, we can do it. And here's what we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.